a time-honored tradition. It's just amazing to think that this weekend, over half a million people will be out together deer hunting in Wisconsin. Hundreds of thousands of hunters will take to the woods over this nine-day period for the annual gun deer season. The baby boomer generation were, were very much plugged into uh, hunting in Wisconsin. Jeff Pritzel, deer program specialist with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, tells us the numbers aren't what they used to be. And as they are are now kind of aging out of participation, unfortunately, you know the younger generations uh, just even if they participate at the same rate, they're just not replacing the, the baby boomer generation. Despite the slight decline, hunters are still bundling up and draping themselves in their blazed orange. And one business isn't slowing down, playing a crucial part in the deer hunting season. And if those hunters are successful, they'll bring their bounty to a processing center like here at Bunzel's. Chip Bunzel, co-owner of Bunzel's Meat Market, tells us they process about 20 to 30 deer a day. You were telling me a little bit about the phone calls you were receiving yesterday. Correct. I had a lot of people calling to say when they could drop off, but you know, I asked them, did you get anything yet? And they said, nope, not yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they're hoping. So Over the next week, the Department of Natural Resources expects about 300,000 deer to be harvested. In Milwaukee, Gabriela Garza, WISN 12 News. All right. Well, with Thanksgiving fast approaching, a local uh, organization is giving out free turkeys in Milwaukee this afternoon. The Islamic Relief USA group hosting the giveaway near 10th and Layton Avenue. Organizers say they're trying to help address food insecurity, rising grocery bills and immigrant groups enjoying their first Thanksgiving meal. We distribute uh, to mostly to the refugee and immigrant communities and um, some of these families, this is their first year here and we want them to feel welcome and, um, you know, here in the U.S. 480 turkeys were handed out at the event. Monday marks one year since the Waukesha parade attack. A remembrance ceremony will begin at Cutler Park at 439 Monday afternoon, the exact time of the tragedy last year. The governor has also ordered flags to fly and have staff across the state from sunrise to sunset to help honor the six victims who were killed that day. Waukesha's Christmas parade has been moved to December 4th this year. Well, ahead of Monday's anniversary, the dancing grannies are taking part in a local Christmas parades. The group in the South Shore Parade in Cudahy this afternoon. Last year, four people killed in the Waukesha Parade were part of the Dancing Grannies organization. Tamara Duran, Leah Owen, Virginia Sorensen, and Wilhelm Hospital. Now, the Dancing Grannies will perform in this year's Waukesha Christmas Parade. Right now, a Waukesha Strong Thanksgiving dinner fundraiser is happening at the Binary in West Allis. The event raising funds to build memorials for the parade victims. Tickets are $15 for adults, 10 for kids 12 and under. In addition to a Thanksgiving dinner, there will also be live music as well as a raffle. 50% of ticket proceeds and 100% of raffle sales will go to the Waukesha Strong Memorial Fund and the Community Fund. The fundraiser runs until 11 tonight. Well, on Friday, Daryl Brooks, the man convicted in the Waukesha parade attack, signaled he plans to appeal the six life sentences and 762 years behind bars the judge handed down earlier this week. Brooks appeared in court Friday on a motion to stay his sentence and remain at the Waukesha County Jail while he files an appeal. Because Brooks is under suicide protocol, he did not have any paperwork on him. The judge said she couldn't find the necessary documents to proceed either. At the conclusion of a month long trial, I have a lot of paperwork. Yes, um, I'm still looking through my notes. I haven't found it yet. Again, I think it's just because we're under the gun to find it. We're not finding it. While Brooks and the court track down the paperwork, Brooks is headed to Dodge Correctional. The judge is expected to take up his motion later this month and Brooks would appear virtually. Well, a scary scene in Raleigh, North Carolina, when a girl was hit and killed by an out of control truck. It happened while people were lining up to march in the city's Christmas parade. Witnesses say the driver screamed to warn people that he couldn't stop the vehicle, but the girl was hit when she didn't get out of the way. The parade was canceled after the incident.
Well, still to come tonight, Buffalo buried in snow. You have got to see this video up next. A state of emergency issued as hundreds of thousands of New York residents hunkered down. The urgent message from officials tonight and the Milwaukee Park domes getting in the festive spirit. A look at the winter wonders you can see right now inside the domes. And wind chills, they're about to drop below zero. How long that cold air lasts, that's ahead on WeatherWatch 12. Well, the Mitchell Park domes getting in the holiday spirit. Take a look at this right now. The calm and bright holiday floral show is on display at the domes. The show features nearly a thousand colorful poinsettias, a towering Christmas tree and vintage ornaments. This is so beautiful. I love the show dome. I love it just makes you feel like you're in the, you know, in the holiday spirit. I love the trees. I love the I love the pond. I've always loved the ponds here and and then the other domes. I love the tropical dome. I love it. It's the best place to be in the winter. Well, the floral show will be on display until January 1st. A multicultural festival returns to the state fairgrounds right now. The 79th annual holiday folk flair taking place at the Expo Center for the first time since 2019. This gives guests a chance to celebrate the holiday season with an international twist. This includes food, vendors and performances from various cultures. You have an opportunity to taste their food, see their culture, learn about their culture, and participate in, in dance. Just really get to know not only your own heritage better, but again, heritage from all over the world. The event runs until 9 tonight and tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. Now to the snowstorm out of Buffalo, New York. The snow being measured in feet not inches residents being urged to be careful as they dig out and dump trucks busy hauling hauling away the snow as more is forecast to fall in the area here's abc's phil lipoff 
The first major lake effect snowstorm of the season has dropped more than six feet of snow on parts of western New York, and it's not over yet. We are hauling snow uh, because so much snow has fallen, there's really no place to put it now. Unfortunately, uh, it looks like more snow is coming. The snow proving too much for the plows. First responders getting stuck as well. We're stuck in the snow at Ideal and Ryman en route to the call. All right, you need to be towed. That's a Roger, Chief. A travel ban put into effect Thursday night, then briefly lifted before being reinstated Friday afternoon. ABC's Matt Rivers in Buffalo. Well, there was a major new snowfall overnight here in downtown Buffalo. You can see it all on the ground behind me. Uh, this after days of unrelenting snow for this region, and yet this system, this storm, still not over yet. Residents starting to dig out. I didn't think we were going to get this much snow. It's definitely a little heavier than I was expecting it to be. Officials warning everyone to be careful as they shovel this wet, heavy snow, confirming at least two deaths due to exertion. You don't need to shovel, especially now. Wait. Try to, if you, you, you know you have a cardiac issue, if you have a heart issue, blood, high blood pressure, don't go out there. Snow also piling up in Michigan. Some areas seeing as much as two feet in Kalamazoo County. Slick roads, whiteout conditions leading to this pile up. At least 20 cars involved, including a Michigan State Police SUV. Phil Lipoff, ABC News, New York. All right, Daji, it's been snowing all day here, but when you look at that video, it can always be worse. It can. Mm. I'm glad we're on this side of the lake. Oh, same, yeah. Instead of the other side of the lake. Check it out. Here's a look at the numbers to put it all in perspective. South Buffalo, 77 inches since Thursday evening. Locations here in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Green Bay, Wausau, Yearly averages don't even come close to that here in Milwaukee, only around 50 inches of snow. Wausau might be the best chance at ever seeing that in a winter season, but not once again in a several set of days. So very outstanding. That system continues to press its way across the Great Lake regions, but we're on the backside of it all. We are noticing drier and more quieter conditions here tonight across southeastern Wisconsin. So if you do plan to hit the roadways, just be aware that we do have temperatures below freezing right now in Brookfield 19 degrees. So anything that's not treated, Everything should be treated at this point, but if it's not, there could be still some slick spots to watch out for. As far as the winds, they have been a nuisance blowing that slow snow around throughout much of today, leading to some reduced visibility as well. Now those winds continue to be around that 15 mile per hour mark over the next 12 hours. We could still have some gusts over that 20 mile per hour mark over the next 12 hours as well. But the real story we're going to have to worry about is the cold air. So those winds and our temperatures combined will have our wind chills in the single digits as we continue through tonight. If you're not already there and then we'll continue to see those fall below zero as we head into the early morning hours. Now inland air as you wake up around 6 a.m., I expect you to still be below zero. This is the time of year where we start to see some of these colder snaps sometimes, and we want to not only prepare ourselves, but make sure we're watching out for animals who have to go outside as well. We want to keep them um, indoors as much as possible, take them on very brief walks. So for tonight, we'll drop down to 11 in Milwaukee. The record is eight, so we're coming close to a record. Inland areas will be in the single digits. Once again, these are the air temperatures, but we could feel much colder as we head into tomorrow. We will still feel that chill even until the noon hour this these are the wind chills once again not the air temperature and it's going to feel like the single digits even by the time we head into the lunch hour the great news is we get back to average sunday monday tuesday it's slow creep sunday 31 degrees monday about 10 degrees warmer, 40 degrees, and then into the mid 40s for Tuesday. And you'll be able to wash the car as well. We'll have a few days here with some more sunshine before we see our next chance at any rain or snow returning to the forecast. So as you look at Thanksgiving, we might be talking about some more winter weather here, but at least the temperature is not going to be as bitter. 40s, I'll take it. Me too. That feels <laughs> tropical. <laughs> yeah, it looks much nicer than today. <laughs> All right, thanks, Saji. Well, coming up in sports, the only state high school football champion from our area this season. Plus, the Badgers now bowl eligible after a come-from-behind win on the road at Nebraska. Stephanie Sutton is next in Big 12 Sports.
Big 12 Sports, presented by Menards. It's been a bit of a roller coaster season for the Badgers, but after their come from behind win over the Cornhuskers today, they are bowl eligible. Let's head to Lincoln, Nebraska. Freedom Trophy in chilly conditions. It was a low scoring affair today. Quarterback Graham Mertz going home run ball, but the Huskers are making him pay. Malcolm Hartzog returns it to the Badgers 37. That interception turned into points for Nebraska. An eight play drive ends with a Trey Palmer TD from Casey Thompson. 7-0 Nebraska at the half. UW